PDX Box, I've learned, is much more than just a, a singing group. It's a community and a family. Um, these people really love coming together. I love coming here, uh, getting together weekly. It feels like a necessity to me now, and um, and those breaks between the sessions while everyone has a chance to catch their breath, it's that's nice, but also I really miss it. I find myself really wanting to come back when the new session starts. So um, yeah, I've just I've learned that this group is about so much more than just performing music. It's about learning musical skills together and um, and our experiences that we that we have each week. There's a lot of things I love. I, I think the main thing with acapella music is that it gives you a chance to hear the original music in an entirely different way. I think that a lot of times we listen to the radio or to our um, iPhones or whatever and you're just listening for the melody and that's all you hear. Um, but if you're like a tenor and you're singing a guitar part or um, you're singing a violin part, you might hear something in the music that you've never actually heard. I think it can actually make you appreciate the original song even more because you're hearing all these cool arrangement things that the original group did that hopefully we transfer into the a cappella um, experience. couple of things. Uh, one, just um, stick with it. It's going to be hard at first. You're, you're asking yourself to do things. Even if you've sung in choirs before, it's very different. Um, and so it may feel challenging at first. You're singing rhythms that you're not quite used to, or you're not singing on words. You have to memorize just these you know, seemingly nonsense syllables that happen over and over. But uh, to try to hear your part as part of the greater whole, and I think it makes a little bit more sense. We were talking earlier about how sometimes like you could get stuck singing one note for 16 bars in a row and how in isolation in a vacuum that part might seem really boring but when you think of how that part stays the same while everything else is moving around it um, it's actually a really beautiful part and so just trying to hear how you fit into the group and then just uh, sticking with it on those times when it's pretty challenging. I don't. Um, I hear that a lot too in, uh, in all the work that I do. Um, a lot of adults who say, oh, when I was a kid, my choir teacher told me that I can't sing or my parents said I shouldn't sing. Um, I, th I think that uh, some people maybe have um, more natural talent that they're given um, at the beginning, but we can all work towards um, being able to sing on tune, sing in pitch, sing in time, all those things. Um, and it just takes practice. It's like any other skill. You wouldn't expect someone to watch into the kitchen and just be able to cook you a five course gourmet meal, but over practice and developing their palate and things like that, then they get the chance to do that. So. I really think that it's a great program for almost all kinds of people. I mean, we, we tend to attract people who are looking for more than just a musical experience, but are looking for that community um, that I talked about earlier. Uh, and I think those people are maybe the happiest here because they get that that sense of family um, from the group. Uh, but in terms of uh, like musical skill levels, I think that it can work across the board. I think that if you're a very beginning musician, then you get a lot of help um, in learning your parts and a lot of uh, extra things like the sound files and all of those kinds of things. And if you're a very advanced musician, you have um, opportunities to go you know a step beyond. You could uh, you know try solos or um, maybe have a chance to lead a sectional during a rehearsal or kind of be that go-to person for your section that people sort of listen to because you've really got your part. You're the rock. So there's this wide spectrum that I think it can really, really work for. There's several different ways. Uh, you know, we teach them in um, during our rehearsals, and sometimes we're sitting at the piano, or sometimes uh, we'll just come and sing with a group. We'll sing it and have them sing it back, or we'll all work on it together. Um, we also have digital sound files, so we create like um, MIDI piano parts for all of our songs that you can listen to at home. We also record all of our rehearsals, or at least we try to, and we'll send those out so you can listen to what we did in rehearsal and get a chance at that. And you also have the sheet music, so if you're someone who does play an instrument and read music, you can go home and just sit at the piano and kind of plunk out your part. So there's a lot of different ways, and that's kind of what I love about it. Even if you read no music at all, um, you could still just kind of use the music as a guide for what words you're supposed to be singing, and then listen for everything else. You can really learn everything by ear in this group. Really what I hope for is that it will it will be all the things that I had in my head when I wrote it on the paper will come out of it in 15 weeks. It's This is a very exciting moment for me because it's the first time you hear singers breathe life into these just notes that you've put on a page so you get like at least a shell of what it's going to sound like. And then over those 15 weeks as we polish it and polish it, um, we can we can get towards all the things that uh, I heard in my head when I wrote it on the page and hopefully all the things that the original artists heard when they wrote it um, themselves. The nuances and dynamics and tempo and all the cool things that we can do with it at that time.